Hello students, uh, this is Dr. Singhal from Rose State College. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Visual Studio 2012 for C Sharp command line and Windows application that you will be doing in this class called CIT 1713. So without any delay we go to Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio will be in a purple icon and when you click on it it will show up an interface like this Visual Studio 2012 we're not talking about 2010 just 2012 and if you need to know how to install it where to get it you can get it through DreamSparks program with Microsoft and that information I will give you in the class hopefully I can find some YouTube videos which can explain step by step how to install that. Okay, so once we have this start page in Visual Studio 2012, we will click on File, New, and the Project. Project simply means this is going to have many, it could have many files, although for a while we will work with just one file. And then, depending upon how you set up your environment either your C sharp will be here or it will be under other languages which is this one so I'm going to click on that and first I'm going to show you how to build a console application where you interact with your program through a console a DOS console so I will click here and I'm going to just call it hello world because that's all this program will do just say hello world and it will be uh, stored in a default folder which is uh, user your name documents which will studio 2012 projects so there will be hello world project under that a little bit later I can show you how to navigate to that folder okay so we click OK and Interestingly enough, it fills out all these using directives, although you don't really need all these, but for the time being, I will leave them on, although I would favor that for simple projects, you can delete all these, because you don't really need those. And it has something called namespace, then a class, and inside class it has come something called static void main method. So right now you can just think of all these as magic words. We'll talk about classes later in the namespace. But really, this is the portion under static void main where you will fill out your code. And let's say we just wanted to output something called hello world. So we simply do that by console dot right line. And in Visual Studio, or any other language for that matter, all the strings that you want to print as is are inside a pair of quotes. Hello world. And each line, each non-signature line in C Sharp ends with a semicolon. So notice this is a signature line for namespace, signature line for the class, signature line for the main method. These don't end with a semicolon, but program statement which are actually not signature lines, they end with a semicolon. So generally if I leave something out, Visual Studio will show me a red line. So if I leave that out, it shows this red line and if I put my mouse on it, it says, hey, you expected semicolon. So uh, Redline is a compiler and generally Visual Studio is smart enough that in C++ or C Sharp or VB code it will put a red line when you have the compiler. So once it looks like there are no compilers, like there are none here, we go to something called build and build the solution. That's actually the compiling step. It compiles and finds any, if it finds any compiler it tells us that and in this case one succeeded zero failed means there are no compilers so 
we are ready to actually run our program. So for running, I go under debug and start without debugging because I'm not actually debugging. I'm just running it. Start without debugging. And when I do that, this command console shows up and that's the hello world that we wanted it to type. String that is inside the yellow here shows up exactly over here. This comes from Visual Studio. You don't need to worry about this message. So this is the command line project or application using uh, C Sharp with Visual Studio 2010, 2012, sorry. Okay, so this is a command line. Now we want to show you the Windows application where you would put graphical user interface uh, components like a button, etc onto the screen. Okay, for that I'm going to open another Visual Studio uh, project. So I just click here and I'll get my second project and you can have a number of them running at the same time. So here again I click on File New Project and then C Sharp but this time I will choose Windows Form application. Okay. Graphical user interface applications are called Windows Form application. And this time I'm just going to have a button here. Button saying hello. Or actually when button is pressed. So just put a uh, name there for the project. Make sure Windows Form application is checked. Click OK. And it will give, give me this form here which is named on the top form 1. And this form you can expand if you like. If you're going to put a lot of components on this form, you can expand it. And when I expand and change its dimension, really speaking, behind the scene, Visual Studio is filling out some code for you as I'm doing it. Now, let's say I don't like this name form 1. This has to be obviously done through a code, but some of these code we can modified through something called a property sheet. So we have form here selected. These are the sizing handles. I click on properties, uh, push button to show it. And if I go to text property here, it shows form one, I can change it. I can say hello uh, project or something. And that property just got changed here. The name from form one became hello project using the text property. Okay. So let's say I want to show a button here, which I when I press, it'll pop out a message that hello hello from sorry phone. Back after that annoying phone call. So I want to put a button here, which if I press, it'll give a pop-up message called hello from C Sharp Windows application or something. So all the controls, all the components we can put in a form are usually in something called a toolbox. So I click on the toolbox and it has something called common controls. Controls is actually a class. A class is a re reusable component and these are pointers, button, checkbox, uh, label, list box, etc., text box, tooltip. These are all derived from the controls class. And what derivation is, that's inheritance relationship. We may or may not get to talk about that in this class, but in any advanced class, you've learned that. So let's say I want to create a button here. I'll click here and drag and drop that here. And it gives it a default name called button one, which is actually in the text property over here. Uh, not a very smart name, but it starts out with something. So let's say I want to change this name to something else. So I just double click here and I just give it a name called press me. And if this name looks a little small, you can change the font property and the font property would be here. This is font and I can go to let's say 
11 bold and now you can see it a little bit bigger the other things you can change the foreground and the background color and so on we won't talk about that right now so basic idea is that uh, when you put a component here you can change some of its property through the property sheet and each time you do that some C sharp code is being filled out for you behind the scene we won't show you where that is but it's being filled out for you the other thing often is done is the name sometimes name is used in the code and we don't say button one we say btn uh, something called press me which is more descriptive obviously okay and click enter now if I compile my program right now so build build solution and since I didn't fill out really any code uh, Visual Studio did that for me it says one succeeded and if I run it right now start without debugging it shows me the form that I built with the button on it and if I press it, it doesn't do anything it's a dumb button and uh, that's not its fault I didn't put any code for it so now I need to go and put the code for it and for any active component for which when you do something with the component and it a code should be executed uh, you double click on that and a code window to fill out the f place where you should be putting the code opens up okay so we wanted to give a message so I will have something called message actually I should have message box dot show and show method is executed mm, hello from C sharp windows application close my quotes this time you need a semicolon okay and so basically a message box will pop up showing this message here all right so once again I rebuild it or build it and start without debugging this time it's not a dumb form click it and it shows me hello from C sharp windows application okay so this is how you build the windows application in C sharp notice there are two views here there's a design view and there's a code view this is called code behind technology by Microsoft so we can flip through both design view and the code view code view is the code that you type not the one that got filled out behind the scenes we won't show you that if you want to locate the files and the folder where uh, your code is right click and say open containing folder and form1.cs is the code that you wrote form1designer.cs is the code that Microsoft filled out for you uh, Visual Studio filled out for you this is another uh, program code that was, that was filled out for you as well but basically uh, when you submit Windows project you should really submit uh, this folder here says buttons saying hello and you can do that by zipping this folder uh, send to compressive folder and really submitting that folder here actually okay so this is the video on showing how to do command line as well as the windows application in C sharp thank you I will see you shortly